Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for today, Monday, August 27th. So we, we were finishing up with Syria, and we're finishing up now with Syria, and um, I was talking about how the globalists are, want to bring the Syrian people to their knees um, by starving them out, uh, keep, you know, uh, lack of medical supplies, no electricity. This is not just me, so I'm not there, I'm not in Syria, but uh, going off that um, uh, that Catholic nuns, testimony i guess she's a big activist over there or at least been telling the truth about what's going on over there she's not really pro assad or anti assad or anything uh, but she basically says that um prior to what all of this stuff that was going on these these quote rebels being armed by the west coming in there and doing what they're doing things they had supplies they had medical supplies they had electricity that they had security and uh we know that what in 20 what was it, 2013, 2014, something like that. They're supposed to actually hold elections as part of their, uh, their the government's changing the way they do things or something like that from going from an autocratic to a democratic uh, uh, country. But the, the government, uh, the outside governments, the globalists, they don't want this. They want to hurry it up. They want to hurry it up and they want to turn it into a what? They want to call it a civil war, which it semi is starting to turn into a civil war. Um, but the thing is, is that uh, they want a regime change. They want a regime change that's pretty obvious, just like in uh, Libya, that's cozy to the West, just like... And believe it or not, in a, quote, democratic uh, country, it's a lot easier to do that, to get their little puppets in. Uh, whereas you have a place like Syria, where they have, like I said, a more autocratic uh, country, it's a little bit harder to get people in there that just, you know, to, to buy them out. I mean, they just talked about that one defector well he didn't actually defect because he cared he defect because they gave him 20 million dollars i mean it took a lot 20 million dollars it was something like i don't know what it was like 20,000 a month or some crazy number just for leaving whereas say over here in the united states these politicians are bought off for fucking pennies pennies on the dollar right they're complete sellouts but you see now france is what in that in the headlines france is telling syria a sovereign nation to uh, actually the rebel terrorists that they're arming and funding uh, to create a new government, create a tra uh, national uh, transitional government like in uh, like in Libya. So they're telling the rebels to form a government. Um, also, they're doing what? They're trying to create a, a no-fly zone, a buffer zone. So, and this is all for what? So that they can declare a humanitarian crisis, humanitarian crisis. So they they don't seem like the aggressors, the invaders or occupiers. So. Um, the CIA, you know, yeah, just they just uh, arm these guys uh, with Stinger missiles and a voila, um, you know, a helicopter goes down. British newspaper claims Western troops are in Syria with zero mandate. SAS allegedly hunts for WMDs as West attempts incremental intervention at any cost. So the British Daily Star has reported in this article the SAS hunt bio arms that nearly 200 elite SAS troops are in or around Syria hunting for Assad's weapons of mass destruction. They're talking about those chemical weapons we were talking about where the Israel Israel and their intelligence is actually helping and feeding the rebels to locate these weapons. And let's not forget, this is this is the catch-22. This is the, the mind fuck, as I call it. It's part of my French. But if Assad and the government move these weapons to get them away from these terrorist rebels, or if these weapons actually get into the hands of the re terrorist rebels that are being funded by the West, then the West sees that as their, um, as their reason, their legal reason to go in there and create a no-fly zone and, 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 and bring troops on the ground, right? I was, reporting, I was just reporting on that recently. So if, no matter what they do, they're going in there. So with that being said, the star also claims the SAS are accompanied by British MI6, U.S. CIA, and both French and American soldiers so this after Barack Obama made comments claiming the U.S. would militarily intervene in Syria so much as moves them uh, in a threatening fashion. So see, there you go. So take a peek at the British spy station in Cyprus. So here's some uh, nifty little pictures. Ooh, no photography. And um, just keep moving down on there. Almost looks like a little water tower, uh, uh, like a Bastille or something. It says here the top secret base which includes living quarters for British servicemen and their families is located near the Green Line. The Times reports that British bases are providing Syrian rebels with vital intelligence information. If true, the information probably comes from this Nicholas base, a listening station of the spy network Echelon. Yeah, it talks about how uh, Cyprus 
Following Cyprus's uh, gaining their independence in the 1960s, the UK retained two sovereign bases. So what a flipping joke, right? I did watch that movie with Marlon Brando burn recently. And uh, pretty crazy, man, how they basically tell the story about how they went in there and they killed all of the natives. They're like basically like indigenous, like Native Americans or something like that in this island. And, um, and then what did they do for sugar? And this is all for sugar and uh, the Portuguese and that and they burned it all down because they wouldn't they wouldn't uh, they couldn't defeat them so they just burned it all down killed every last one of them or almost all of them then they brought in their slaves the black slaves and then um, the, the Portuguese of course were kind of like at the head of this well the British send in Marlon Brando who's like this you know MI6 type dude or whatever a black ops or whatever he goes in there to foment a revolution of the black slaves against the Portuguese and then <laughs> they put this uh the, the leader you know saying oh see you got your revolution you got your freedom and at the end uh when the british basically oust the portuguese oust uh the black slaves that uh, supposedly have their own democratic republic or something like that the leader of this like you know this uh this uh, uh, uh this new government this british public government he says, because they're coming after him. They call him guerrillas, and, and and Marlon Brando says these guys are dangerous because they have an idea and they fight for it, and they you know they can't just be bought out. And they're up in these hills fighting, fighting, fighting. At the end, uh, this young black um, uh, soldier uh, asked this uh, this leader, this general, that uh, started to believe in the propaganda, right, to to actually represent his people. He told them that, you know. Uh, the only key they only keep us alive if they can use us if they can exploit us and that you'll never get your your freedom you got to fight for it you can't just have it handed to you basically like they had to him it was all just a stage a show so we have Syria says preparing to finalize oil deal with Russia they're preparing to complete a deal with ally Russia to secure much needed oil products to keep its economy and military running Israeli rabbi calls for prayers for Iran destruction. So remember Ahmadinejad saying that he thinks that Israel, the state of Israel, or the idea of Israel should be wiped off the map. He didn't say he was going to bomb them and blow them off the map. No, he just said that they're an illegitimate state. Um, but this guy's actually calling for wiping out and destroying Iran. He says here, do good, God, wipe them out. Kill them, he entreated, to which he and Selba the crowd answered, Amen. Destroy them, God, obliterate them from the face of the earth, he added. So it says here in one of the comments, this is, this old Zionist do not represent the real Jews, but a satanic cult of Zionism called Shas. They don't follow the teaching of Moses and the Ten Commandments, like thou shalt not kill or thou shalt not steal. But I guess only in Israel can you hold nukes and be outside of whatever the non-proliferation treaty and uh, be able to make statements like this and be, to be able to carry out airstrikes on territories that were uh, stolen from people and go through with your military terrorizing uh, mostly children. Iran sympathizes with Venezuela over a refinery blast. So he sent a message to Hugo Chavez of Venezuela uh, over this blast on Saturday. He said here he expressed hope that Venezuela will continue along its path of progress and prosperity by rebuilding the refinery in the shortest possible time. Uh, so this is pretty crazy. It says here 39 people, uh, including a 10-year-old child and 18 National Guard troops, were killed and over 80 people were wounded in the explosion. Someone made a, a pretty interesting comment. It says, I hope Iran helps Venezuela to investigate whether this was a deliberate act of sabotage in the form of cyber warfare. So yeah, that, that poor bastard's gone through the, the cancer uh, treatments twice. Who knows if it's weaponized or not. And they got the elections coming up and uh, they just caught a, 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 a military, possibly a CIA, a person there to foment unrest in the country coming up to the elections. So who knows? Venezuela ramps up China oil exports. So it says here they've been, uh, Washington's been fixated on the war on terror. It says here, Latin America has been throwing off the shackles of the Monroe Doctrine and says these ignored developments may uh, well soon refocus Washington's attention on the Southern Hemisphere. I remember recently, I, 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 it was probably a couple months ago, I was mentioning that when Leon Panetta was down in South America. And, uh, you know, eventually they will take it down there, their war on terror, war on whatever it will be, drugs, or Iran's army chief suing the U.S. over sanctions. So the general claims Washington opposes uh, security and independence of Iran. U.S. should be made to pay for the unwise decision of sanctions. Also, there's uh, people that are getting sued for drone strikes. 
uh, those Yemenis that got killed in those U.S. Uh, CIA drone strikes, they're actually trying to sue them for that as well. Major Asian countries to import Iran oil despite EU ban. So it says here they're set to import the Iranian crude oil despite illegal U.S. engineered sanctions against the Islamic Republic. And uh, China is excluded from waivers for oil trade with Iran. This is actually from June 2012. So it goes on here. It says uh, weeks before American sanctions intended to reduce Iran's oil exports take effect. The Obama regime announced on Monday that it would exempt seven major importers of Iranian oil, but not China. It says here because these countries had significantly reduced their oil purchases from Iran. It says here that uh, China is actually the number one buyer of Iranian oil. Something I uh, thought was interesting recently is the news as far as uh, China goes is the printing of the yuan. It says here China announces. Uh, 800 billion stimulus to boost confidence. They've announced a total of 8 trillion yuan or of uh, stimulus projects to try to boost confidence in an economy that appears to be cooling faster than expected. And then we have this China banks play risky game of hunt the uh, deposits. It says here uh, China banks are playing a risky game, the deposit shuffle. It says here the rules are simple pile billions of yuan in customers' deposits onto the balance sheet in time for financial reports then shimmy them off right afterwards. The motivation for this window dressing is simple, to make it look like the bank's loans do not exceed the regulatory limit of 75% of deposits. The regulatory cap on interest rate banks can pay on deposits uh, makes funding cheap but hard to find, so these banks are tempted to game the system. And we're talking about the U.S. dollar, the petrodollar, right? U.S. arms sales hog 75% of global market. So Washington's overseas sales tripled last year. So we're talking about the military-industrial complex, the defense contract uh, complex, the banking complex, uh, but the energy complex. So 11 international agreements that are nails in the coffin of the petrodollar. So this is what the dollar is all about, is the petrodollar and the defense dollar and the lending dollar. And when you go down there and check it out, it's basically what China and Russia decided to start using their own currencies trading with each other. I report on that back way back. Then China and Brazil is trading, China and Australia, China and Japan, um, also India and China uh, as far as buying oil from Iran. Kim threatens war over U.S.-South Korea military drill. He said, here, if the enemies fire even a single shell in our uh, territory, the whole army should turn out as one and lead the battle to an all-out uh, counter-offensive. I just covered North Korea about maybe there's things that are changing and in that one video one of those uh, analysts was saying that you know as long as the West uh, is, is carrying out these exercises and uh, around their territory and stuff like that provoking them uh, that they're going to continue to get these types of statements from North Korea so there you go and uh, what I remember I remembered him before I was like they have a lot of patience because they haven't done anything before but he says this is this is a limit to our patience United States say they want more early warning radars in Asia. North Korea is focused, but concern exists about China. Possibly because of this, this uh, ICBM intercontinental ballistic missile that they've been uh, test firing it says here China could penetrate U.S. with new huge missile. And it's like George Carlin said with the sexual innuendos, they could penetrate him with a huge missile. <laughs> But I, I don't think there's going to be this big war between China and the United States. Maybe there will be. I don't know. But um, it seems to be more like um, uh, like foreplay, right? Uh, uh, defense contra military industrial complex foreplay, and about uh, the West securing their trading block in the Pacific. Because we all know. I mean, they, they're actually telling us the governments and that in the media, they've come out and said their policy in Panetta, Leon Panetta, we're shifting our policy to the Pacific from the Middle East. And that's, of course, when Russia comes into play. Russian military brass look to draft 50,000 men by any means, including pre-conscription training. So that's pretty crazy. It's supposed to be approved by Vladimir Putin in September, so that on the eve of October 1st, issued a decree to the head of state of an early autumn draft. And the communists are actually uh, not liking the Putin government. They're actually blasting uh, Vladimir Lenin witch hunt. And, uh, and the communists are also angry that uh, most Russians actually want to move Lenin's body out of the Moscow mausoleum and bury him. And these activists claim that uh, there's a lot of people that believe in Leninism still from the old war. 
and they might be angry. And just recently, there's been more explosions going off in Russia. Three injured as bomb goes off in southern Russia. But there's a lot of geopolitical interest behind these scenes that are actively working to destabilize Russia with violence as their most potent weapon. Thank you.